people feel that they have the right to come up to you and impose their views onto you about your personal body. Being plus size is a choice. Three, two, one, go. Fat acceptance is one of the stupidest, most foolish movements ever created by humans in the history of our existence. The denial and blatant ignorance as well as the lack of accountability, which are all qualities found within said movement, simply make me question how anyone could possibly be a part of it. Nevertheless, there's a considerable amount of people, most of whom are quite young, who act and express themselves in ways which reflect the core values of fat acceptance. In order to combat this curse of a movement, we will be watching a video titled Do do all plus sized people think the same by the YouTube channel Jubilee. But I feel obligated to warn you that all the qualities I mentioned about this movement are found within that video, so I ask you to proceed at your own risk. Let's get right into it. I hope you enjoy. I The reason I am here is because I feel like in the past, fat has been such like a like derogatory term and like we've been so like ridiculed for the way we look, it's almost like I want to take that word back and make it a positive thing. The only way that would work was if being fat didn't come with a host of complications like heart disease and stroke, diabetes, cancer, gastroesophageal reflux disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, gallstones, gastritis, hypertension, and a fuck ton more. Now unless you mean to ignore all these health issues, there's no way you can transform the word fat into something positive. It just isn't because having a large amount of excess flesh is not a positive. Like, oh, someone called me fat, ugh, <laughs> so yeah. negative, and be like, yes, I am. If society ever lets this happen, I definitely won't be around to see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just like change the way we think of it. A lot of words that should offend me don't. I think it's because I'm just kind of like, I don't even need the word to know your intention. Exactly. So I know your intention. And if you're using it to like hurt me, I don't care what word you use. I care that you wanted to hurt me. Mm. I just don't look at like a word like that as being like, mm. You don't want to give it power. No, I don't want to give it weight. Yeah. First of all, please don't do that ever again. And second of all, I understand being fat shamed isn't cool, but when you consider that even in context outside of fat shaming, the word fat still has a negative meaning, it should really make you wake up to reality and realize that being fat is in no way good. Being plus size is a I'm only standing on this one and not strongly disagree because some people do like try to be plus size. Like there's like lots of people in the gay community that are called like eaters and feeders. So people do try to be bigger, but I mean, I don't think it's necessarily a choice. So that's the only reason why I'm not strongly disagree. Just cause you don't necessarily realize that you're shoving so much food in your gob that you look like a hot air balloon does not mean it's not actually your fault and choice. You could easily count the amount of calories you consume a day. Then perhaps you would become aware of your gluttony. I lost 60 pounds in six months. Everyone was so happy for me. I hated myself. I hated the way I looked. I hated why I did, why I exercise and things like that. And so I made the conscious decision of my parents are not going to be supportive or maybe they won't like it, my community, the Korean community, mm. is going to be really disappointed that there's a fat Korean walking around the world. Mm. But it was a choice for me to say, well, I don't want to work out eight hours a day every day and hate what I look like to be skinnier, so I'm going to let myself eat more than a quarter cup of white rice today. This was probably just a terrible attempt at satire, but even working out for an hour could do the job and you can definitely eat more than a quarter cup of white rice, especially when you're eating healthy foods that aren't incredibly calorie dense. Now I'm certainly not in favor of her wanting to be overweight and prioritizing her appearance over her health because she apparently feels better being overweight than she does being skinny, which I think is crap. She just can't be bothered to work out and eat healthily anymore. At the end of the day no one can force her to lose weight and at least she's admitting that it's her choice because it is. I disagree because I believe in society especially in America we have this 
idea that, oh yeah, all fat people ate themselves that way. That's because that is the case for most fat people. That they just sit at home and they're lazy and they don't do anything and they ate themselves that way. But they don't take into account people who have a disease. Most fat people don't have a disease, they just eat too much, that is why they are fat, and even if they do, what they shouldn't be doing is accepting their excess weight. Why? Because your body doesn't care whether you're fat because you have a disease or because you eat too much. The consequences are still the same. They don't take into account people who work out. No person that seriously works out is going to be really overweight and slightly overweight. People who work out won't be overweight for very long. People think that fat people don't don't seriously exercise because they wouldn't otherwise be fat. And their body is just built that way. No body is built that way. You don't slip out of your mom's vagina looking like a walrus. Most of the time that is on you. So there are all of these other factors that the average person who's judging people don't take into account and they just look at someone and they say, oh, you're fat and you're not doing anything about it. Because the average person who's judging people is judging the average fat person who got fat by eating too much. But I also want to throw out there, like, it is possible that people have eaten themselves to that point, but then you look at, like, why did that happen? Like, there's trauma, there's rough coping mechanisms, there's so many different things that can lead to somebody resorting to that and then eating themselves into this situation, because I know that's what happened to me. I didn't choose it, but it happened. Now, in no way am I attempting to downplay trauma or any other serious cause that could lead to overeating and becoming overweight, but excusing overweight and obesity by saying, yeah, I'm that size because of my trauma would be like excusing drug abuse for the same reason. Any responsible person wouldn't therefore just go, okay, yeah, go ahead, everyone needs a way to cope, but would instead help them turn to a different, healthier coping mechanism. Because as we've established, your body doesn't care why you're fat, the outcome is the same. When I first went back to Korea, which is like the country of my parents, and like it was amazing for me, and I was like, wow, I look like everyone else, right? Like, this is my home country, this is supposed to be my place. It's not my place, because I'm fat. I would never criticize a fat person for their size just because it might not make them exceptionally pretty. I would criticize them for their size because of how unhealthy it is. The latter is way more important than the former. And so, walking down the street, people are like, do you know how easy it is for you to get liposuction here? They won't even scar because they can do it pretty for an Asian person oh, or whatever. Oh my god. I had family said, you know what, we'll fix your ears, we'll fix your nose, we'll fix your eyes, your lips, and all your fat. And that is just, it's mind-boggling to me that you would even think to offer that or think that I dislike my body. If I was a member of your family, I would never think to offer it out of an appearance standpoint, but because I want you to be healthy and live a good life. And I think that's also the thing. The critique comes from this idea of, you must hate how you look, so let me help you. People feel that they have the right to come up to you and impose their views onto you about your personal body. I'm not imposing my views onto your body, they are universally acknowledged biological facts. People tell you to lose weight because of the fact that you are putting your life in jeopardy. I want to lose weight. Three, two, one, go. The reason like I hesitated so much is because I will love the way I look no matter what. At the same time, like if I like was to keep dancing and keep going to the gym and all this, and then I just like happened to lose weight, like I'd also be like, cool. It's mind boggling to me how ignorant these people are. If she really danced a lot and went to the gym not for a free drink, but to actually exercise properly, she wouldn't happen to lose weight. She would lose weight because that's how it works. It's not up to chance when she's physically active. Oh, bye. <laughs> See ya. 
I want to be here because this is like the work that I do, and I feel like doing this is gonna like make. It's like being here. Someone's gonna say something to me and be like, oh, like like you aren't for body positivity, you aren't for fat activism, you aren't for liberation. But like this, that has nothing to do with anybody else besides me. I think like if I if I say if I have this and I'm not saying. I just want you to know that I am understanding absolutely nothing he's saying. I'm not being honest with myself and saying like, you know what? Sometimes I do think about losing weight because I do, and like and like everyone does. Because there's privileges when you're smaller, so it's like <laughs> it's natural. <laughs> to think I want to be smaller because there's so many more options for me if I'm smaller. And of course there's that person who acts oppressed because of their fucking body size. He must be aware that he is oppressing himself. He's voluntarily being oppressed. His body size is not out of his control and losing weight really isn't rocket science. I think I'm not wrong in assuming that those who chose to lose weight and actually went through with it didn't do so because they wanted to be privileged but because they wanted to enjoy life and not experience pain and discomfort all the time. <laughs> the world is built according to the average person and since thin people are closer to average than fat people that is to be expected instead of crying about it though you should do some cardio for me um since i am a dancer it is the most annoying thing like i go to auditions and i'm the only like plus size person there and literally if you go to a a concert and see an artist, you will like never see someone that looks like me dancing back up for like Chris Brown. All they care about is, you know, oh, sex sells and, you know. Well, yes, yeah, sex sells and the majority of people don't find plus-sized people sexy. Also, in my opinion, it would be ethically wrong too, because including plus-sized people everywhere would be normalizing being plus-sized and that would be bad on a societal level as well as a personal one. Plus size isn't sexy, which it is, obviously. It fucking isn't. But <laughs> they don't, they can't get that, you know, out of their heads that skinny is like the like top tier of like life. Well, when it comes to health associated with weight as well as beauty standards, then yes, it is. And your laziness won't convince me otherwise. So what kept you though from on the strongly agree? Too many steps, obviously. The world is created with smaller bodies in mind. Like okay. everything we experience, when you sit in a folding chair, when you go on an airplane, when you go to the movie theater, and the unfortunate truth is our population is not that small. It is quite unfortunate because that means that the population is becoming increasingly unhealthy, but even if the majority of the population was fat, it would still be stupid to start accommodating that majority because that would be normalizing such an unhealthy way of life. I had to quit a whole career because of my size. This is just agonizing to watch. Instead of waking up to reality, all these people do is cry. Cry, 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 act depressed, and just basically do anything but exercise. Like, I got my first degree in musical theater performance. I was ready to go to Broadway. And then through college, I gained 65 pounds. And not only did I watch my professors lose interest in me, but I watched casting people lose interest in me. And that's how I ended up in education because I want to teach that that's not okay. You can play any role because that's what's baffling to me is that we're in an age where in theater, we can suspend our disbelief that like animals can talk and things like that, but we can't accept that a plus size person could have somebody fall in love with them unless it's hairspray. I think when it comes to theater and acting, it comes down to the same thing, namely sex sells. I'm pretty sure that if I asked you if you'd prefer watching a romance featuring a beautiful thin woman as the main character over a love story starring an obese woman as the main character, you'd opt for the former. I love my body. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I'm guessing the only way fat people can love their bodies is in regards to appearance, because that at least is subjective, but appearance is totally irrelevant in comparison to health. I love my body, but it took a lot of time to get there. When I graduated college and I was in like the biggest place that I've ever been, I was in a depression that I can't even like begin to explain about it. And then when I went off to grad school, I was like, something has to change. New city, new me. Oh, this actually sounds incredibly empowering. I'm sure she's gonna say something really inspiring in a second. Mm. And so I got up every morning and I looked in the mirror and I was like, what can I like about myself today? And I learned how to just love every little part of me because it is mine. It belongs to me. 
And if I don't love it, who is going to? Surprise, surprise, I was wrong. This is actually pissing me off. These people are more focused on their appearance as fat people than society is. I don't give a shit whether you lie to yourself every single day in the mirror and try to convince yourself that your body is beautiful when that is absolutely not of the highest priority. It's about your fucking health for the 600,000th time. Now the rest of the video is just more soppy bullshit about these fat people's version of body positivity, which I'm definitely not putting you or myself through. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Don't forget to comment on future video suggestions and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.